We're here at DVD 2018 and I'm speaking to Mike Ivey, Senior Vice President, International Programmes, Oshkosh Defence. Mike, JLTV, UK's MRVP requirement. Lots has been written about it. Um, we're here at DVD. What's new? What can you tell me about that programme? Well, first, let me just say that Oshkosh Defence is really pleased to participate in DVD again. It's a wonderful program. It's a great opportunity to show off the capabilities of our vehicle, and we're glad to be here. With respect to MRVP in the UK, what I can tell you is, is not much has changed lately. Um, we continue to uh, wait for main gate review to be complete on the UK side. Uh, we're, we're waiting as patiently as we can and continue to support the UK customer, but we're waiting for main gate review to be complete. So, so despite some of the mainstream media speculation that there is no formal timeline uh, that you can disclose or even mention at the moment? No, I, I wish there were, but there's not. You would really have to engage with our UK customer for, for that kind of scheduling. Uh, and looking further afield with JLTV, um, U.S. Army, uh, U.S. Army, U.S. Marines, right. uh, main launch customer. Um, could you give us an update? How many have been ordered? How many have been manufactured, delivered sure. to date, and so on? Sure. We, we have over 5,000 JLTVs now on contract. We've built 2,000. So a little over 2,000 vehicles uh, have been delivered to the customer in what we call the low rate initial production phase of the program, LRIP phase of the program. We're expecting a what, what in the U.S. is called a milestone C decision in the next quarter, so sometime before the end of the year. We expect the U.S. Department of Defense to make that milestone C decision, which will move us into the full rate production phase of the program will ramp production up and begin um, and begin deliveries um, that will last out to potentially up to 17,000 vehicles. And, and, and looking at JLTV, how many variants are there mm. at the moment? Yeah, there are, there are two variants, but four models. Within the variant family, we have a two-door and a four-door. The two-door is a utility variant, so it looks like a pickup truck and can carry loads like pickup trucks carry and, and more. And then we have four-door variants that consist of the close combat weapons carrier, the heavy gun carrier, and the general purpose vehicle. Those are all four-door variants, slightly different, but all, all made on a four-door on a four-door vehicle. Um, and I understand that, that at the moment there's an A1 JLTV. Um, the difference between an A0 and A1 would be? Yeah, so, so there is an, you're right, we began production in the A0 version, we're now in the A1 version, and that's because the vehicle has the, the GM Duramax engine as its basic block. It's modified by a company called Banks so that it's uh, it's militarized primarily for JP8 fuel and, and tweaked for other applications as well. But the difference between the A0 and the A1 is in GM's change of the Duramax block. So when GM changed the block, the Duramax block, we had to make the change as well, which moved us into an A1 version of the truck. But the, the difference is primarily in the engine no difference really in horsepower performance, it's just a different block. And, and moving further afield still, is there anything you can say about potential international sales interest in JLTV? There's, there is huge interest internationally in JLTV. There's, there has been one other public announcement and that was at a conference in Helsinki with the Secretary of Defense uh, where it was announced that Lithuania will buy the JLTV. And we're working with another uh, a number of other countries internationally who, who have displayed great interest in JLTV. Excellent. Thank you very much.